Hello folks, welcome back. Pastor Bob from Place of Refuge. Today's message is called Obedience Precedes a Blessing. I want you to think about that as we go through this whole thing. This is another one of those interesting stories. I've been in the Old Testament. I always like to go from the Old to New, back and forth. And so I'm going to be in 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. All right, so here we go. Let's follow along. Oh, just quickly, there's a, the word, um, there's a captain here, it's called, his real name is Naaman. And so he says, Naaman. So I'm going to call him Naaman so we can go through this quickly, quickly, you know, be a little better than just, you know, it's kind of a tongue twister. So his real name is Naaman. And so I'm going to call him Naaman. All right. So here we go. Verse one. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in value, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. He said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. So the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now, when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive, and this man does send unto me a recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh the quarrel against me. And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come on now unto me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot, stood at the door of the house of Elisha, and Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth, and went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me, and stand, and call on the name of the Lord his God, and strike his hand over the place, and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Farpar, Farpar rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned away, he turned and went away in a raid. And his servants came near and spake unto him, and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, would thou hast done it? How much rather than when he say, wash and be clean? Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh again came unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. So there it is, verses 1 through 14. Now, this Naaman, or this Naaman, I called him here, um, he was... He was a great man. It says, you know, here his name actually means, if I went to the Hebrew, it says uh, his name means pleasantness. So he had favor with his master, and he was a very honorable man. But then it says he's a mighty man of valor. So he had strength and might and wealth and ability, force. And, of course, he was a commander of the army. He was a leper, which is nothing more than a skin disease back then. Now, it was very contagious back then. And today... I know it probably still exists, but um, we have so much technology that it's not likely it'll spread through anybody. I'm not saying it can't, but at any rate, it's a disease of the skin. Most of you know, if you've been a Christian for any long, it was not good to have be a leper years ago. So then it says the Syrians had gone out by companies, and they had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited on uh, Naaman's wife or Naaman's wife. Now, it's believed that these were like kind of marauding type parties, you know, and going out and brought back grain and cattle. And obviously, they brought, they brought back this young lady. We don't know what her name is. What she's sent to is a young maiden. She's like a slave, if you will. And she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said, this is the little maid, unto her mistress, boy, 
you know, he, it's kind of, if you paraphrase, if he could only meet this man of God. So it says, would, would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him, all right, of his leprosy. And if only my master was with that prophet. You know, you know, and it's like, recover here, it means, you know, being clean again. And would my Lord with the prophet is be clean. Again, it was the prophet he was would recover. Okay, so here's the deal. You know, a lot of times when we go to even conferences or maybe even a church, a lot of people think, well, if I can only have the pastor pray for me, if I can only have this person, may I submit to you, we're all ministers of God. You and I are the same. I'm no better than you. Amen. And people that know me know I'm like that. And, you know, so it's like you have, you're a minister. Amen. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So you have that anointing just as anybody like myself or any man at a conference. Now, is it nice to have him? Sure. But if they don't pray for you, don't feel slighted. Amen. You're going to see this coming up here. So he went and told his Lord, saying, thus, thus, and thus. Another one said, hey, here's what I heard. And it says, the maid here, it means female servant, like I alluded to, or in this case, it's a little girl and a maid. Verse 5. And the king of Syria said, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed, took him. Now look at this entourage that he took. He took 10 talents of silver and 6,000 prices of gold and 10 chains of raiment. Now all these three were very, very, you know, uh, considered valuable. The 10 talents is a royal weight. It could be gold, silver, bronze, or iron. In this case, it was, took with him 10 talents of silver. Um, I doubt that they were rounds. I'm not saying they can't be. You know, nowadays, if you buy silver there, you can buy silver rounds. You can buy silver bars. And it depends on how pure it is. You know, right now, silver is probably right under or right close to $22 an ounce. So this was quite a big, quite a big deal. So, and 6,000 pieces of gold. Now, in looking this, it was a doubtful that it was rounds back then as well. It was more like uh, what people would call a bar. So I have no idea what the weight of it is, but right now, and this is probably last week's price, just like silver, it was almost close to $1,900 an ounce. So let's just say, you know, it was even a bar. Well, you know, that's a lot of money. So this gift, was, this gift was very handsome. And then the 10 raiment. Now, back then, the raiment was worth a lot, too. And so this was quite an entourage, people coming, and it was quite a, uh, a very handsome gift, if you will. So he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come to thee, behold, I therewith sent Nahum, or Naaman, my servant, to take thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. Now, I think the intention of this king was that somebody in another, in, in this case it was Israel, would know anybody that was, you know, uh, somebody that had that caliber, you know, where, hey, yeah, I know who this guy is. But he, he didn't take it that way. See, we see what happens. You know, he really got, he was like a little concerned in verse 7. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he ran his clothes and said, Am I God? to kill and make alive, and that this man does send unto me, recover a man of leverage. In other words, how in the heck can I do that? Amen? So he thought he was looking for a quarrel. Now that word quarrel in the Hebrew means it was an encounter or seek an occasion. So simply put, my friends, he thought the king of Syria was trying to find a way to get some kind of an offense or whatever to come and conquer the land. But so what happened? He tore his clothes, and then Elisha's and so when Elisha saw him, he said, the man of God, he had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, hey, wherefore thou dost rent, why are, you, why are you renting your clothes? Let him come unto me. And see, so what's renting? Now, you and I today, in modern days, and here we're in 2022, we can rent clothes. Most times, a lot of people will rent tuxes for a wedding or a special occasion because they most likely won't use it quite often. Now, a lot of people have suit. I have a few suits. You know, I predominantly use them for weddings and funerals. I usually don't wear a suit. I wear casual. So there's, and again, so renting here means tearing your clothes. And it meant, now here's a, here's a whole thing that I come across. <clears throat> excuse me. What it means. It means great distress, which obviously this, 
or remorse. And also it's a sign of mourning or it could be sorrow. And here's another one, truth being destroyed. You know, I know there's people in the Old Testament, they rent their clothes because of, you know, people weren't listening to God or because there was uh, no faith. And so Elijah sees this and said, hey, let him come in. He'll to know that there's a prophet in Israel. So here's a good reminder. When all seems like there is no way out, there is God in heaven and there's God's people around us. You know, I would hope and trust that you're part of the remnant today. My friends, I say this a lot in these recordings and I say it a lot to my church. There are churches and there's a lot of people turning away from the truth and they're not holding on to the truth. Remember what Christ said when he comes back, will he find faith? So there's always a remnant. You just have to, you know, make sure that you're seeking them out, that you be a part of the resistance. You be the remnant of God and don't give up. Let us not become weary of well-doing. Amen. So Naaman came with his horses and with the chariot and stood at the door. Now get this. So here he is. He makes this trip and he comes to the house of Elisha. Now remember, this was a mighty man of valor. He was very famous, if you will, and honorable. He was a great man for his own king. Sent the letter. And Elisha sent some mes he sends a messenger out and he tells him what to do. He says, go and wash in the Jordan seven times and the flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean. Now, it says wash. Okay? And I wanted to look this up in the Hebrew. And so... The wash here means to bathe, all right? This Hebrew word carries, but here there's a lot of spiritual implication behind this word. I want you to listen to this. It carries the connotation of washing with water in order to make clean. Well, that's an obvious one, all right? But here's another one. Symbolically, such a washing was a declarative of innocence. It also was a figurative of cleansing from sin. Amen? So isn't that cool? So, but it says how many times that he wants to do it? Seven times. All right, let me teach you something. The word seven here, okay, it, it, if you go to the Strong's, it'll say it's a, a cardinal number. Well, that doesn't help you much, does it? <laughs> All right, so seven here um, means spiritual perfection and completeness if you do a study on it in the Bible. All right. And so the cardinal number, what does a cardinal number mean? It means it's plural. That's why you see, go wash seven times. When you see it, if there's cardinal numbers in the Bible, it means it's plural. They're used other places, in, in, in this case, the multiplication seven times. The time here is an occurrence or a time. It's a stroke also called now. In other scriptures, it means spiritual perfection. All right? So... Let me give you something about this spiritual perfection. You see what I'm talking about. This is going off. It's a total dis different story, but this is Leviticus 16, 14. Let me read this to you. And he shall take the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle the blood with his finger, what? Seven times. So before the mercy seat here, Seven times because this was the perfect testimony for the people that atonement for their sins was what? Accomplished. That's what it means. And so it, this number seven has a lot of significance. And you guys, you've been a Christian, you know that's true. So here, wash in the Jordan seven times. And the flesh shall come again to thee, shall be clean. Now the word clean means you'll be to be pure, get this, to be clean physically of disease, and here it is, to be cleansed and be pronounced clean. Hallelujah. These are all types of Christ. You and I are pronounced clean when you accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. His blood of Jesus, he's justified us, and now we're in the beloved because of his great blood. Praise the Lord. But see, Naaman, okay, Naaman, or Naaman, was wroth, and he went away and sad. Behold, I thought, oh, now get this, I think he would come out to me and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and, and recover the leper. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. Uh, he was wroth. Well, let me tell you what that is, and I'll make a couple of comments. The wrath means he was angry, displeased, full of wrath, furious, put oneself into a rage. Now, my Hebrew word study said this, sometimes the anger, listen up, was not justified. 
There was only two places, if my memory serves me right, that this come across in the Old Testament. This is one of the two where the anger is not justified. Why? Because he thought, well, can I do this and can I do that? We'll get into it. So he went away. He departed. And this is exactly what happens sometimes in life, my friends. When God wants us to do something, it looks like it don't make sense or whatever. And so we get mad and we say, well, you know, I thought this guy would come out and do this and do that and do all this, you know, deal. You know, so I look up the word. You ever heard of the word antics? Now, this is not in Hebrew, but this is something about. He was looking for antics, antics or something great. So here's what it says. In, it, it means in the Webster's Dictionary, an attention drawing, often widely playful or funny act or action. Here it is. Possibly some clownish extravagance or absurdity. So that's what the Webster said. So he was looking for some grander thing, but that's not what happened. So what's he do? He rebuttals with this. Wait a minute. Isn't Abana and Farpar rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Well, Abana was a river flowing into the plain of Damascus, and this Farpar was, um, it was swift, a storm in the district of Damascus, and it rises in the southeast slopes of Mount Hermon and flows into the southernmost lake of Damascus. We probably couldn't find them today. Maybe some antique things you could find it, but anyways, you get the point. All right. Now, May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went and went a rage. All right, no. What was the answer? Could I do this? The answer was no. Why? Because the man of God told him, this is what you need to do. Folks, listen to me. How many times do you hear, why do I have to go to church? Why do I have to accept the Lord Jesus as my Lord and Savior? Why? Because it's real. That's the only thing. Could I, could I go to this religion or that and be saved? No, you can't. Okay, so this is the real deal. Jesus Christ is the real Son of God. We have the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. There's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? So man always thinks there's always some another way. This would be work, wouldn't this work just as good as the other? No, it will not. God tells us what to do, and in this case, he told this man, you have, this is what you got to do. So he went away in a rage, and he was really bummed out. And that rage here means heat, rage indignation, anger, wrath, and it even says poison and burning anger. So we see what? He's stubborn. He's feeling, well, why can't I do this? Yeah, how many people that you talk to? Well, why do I have to accept Jesus Christ? How do you know God and how all this other stuff? Come on, let's get real. There's only one way to God. And believe me, things are coming out today. They think that all roads lead to God. May I submit to you? No. No, it does not. Wide is the road <laughs> of destruction. Amen. And the narrow path is a life, and not, not many find it. But we can find it. You found it. I found it. Praise God. Here's about a little scripture on um, uh, stubbornness. This would be Psalm 32 9. And it was talking about some animals. Get this. Be not as a horse or as a mule. How many know horses and mules? Hear what it says. Which have no understanding. That's the truth. Whose mouth must be held in with what? A bit and bridle. You know, lest they come near unto thee. So, you know, now a man was ticked off big time and he departed in rage. You know what a horse and a mule, they have to be directed by something. You know, we only see one occasion in the Bible where there was a talking donkey. Pretty cool thing. It's another story. Now, so we will see some very wise counsel from some of his people with him. And so here's a servant in verse 13. And it says, He came near and he spake unto him and said, My father... If the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldn't thou have done it? How much rather than when he saith, wash and be clean? You know, let's just say he said, what if he told you to t go and kill a hundred of enemies and bring their heads back to me or something that, you know, or something real big deal, some great thing. Here's what it means. You know, God wants your heart, my friends. We don't have to do something to get saved. We have to ask him to be saved. Amen? Well, how about I repent? How about I do this? And I say this many prayers, and I say this and that. No, that's not going to get you. Go to Romans 10 and tell you how to get saved. You accept the Lord with a simple mind of forgiveness, asking for forgiveness, inviting him into your heart, be Lord of your life. That's very simple. It's verbal. How much easier? How many of you know about all the other cults? You have to work for your salvation. Jesus Christ, his gift is free. But then it's a lifelong battle after that. 
and it's well worth it. You need to walk worthy of your calling. So the servant was bringing in some simple hearts. Say, hey, what do you got to lose? Amen? That's, that's not the Hebrew. That's my idea. <laughs> you know, do it. What do you got to lose? And so then he went and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan. Now the other one says, watch this, says dip, according to the saying of the man of God. So he was obedient. And his flesh came again, now get this, like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. Now, here's my point, my friends, through this whole message. Sometimes you and I have to do the ridiculous for the miraculous. Amen? Think about that. No healing. You know, there's other, you know, there's a bunch of stuff. Obedience precedes a blessing. Keep that. Or preparation and obedience precedes a blessing. Look, here's a couple of instances in the Bible. There's, there's a many more. There is no healing until the leper had dipped seven times. That's this. And no entrance into heaven without cleansing. That's you and I accepting the Lord as our Lord and Savior and our sins are forgiven. You know, remember the ditches? They had to dig ditches before the water came. There's always something except for ex accepting the Lord, but God wants us to be obedient. You and I need to walk worthy of our calling. Amen? Not everybody that says to me, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Those are another study, but you guys get the drift of it. Psalm 89, verses 6 and 7. Some side scripture here. For who in heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Nobody. Who among the sons of mighty can be likened unto the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of his saints, and to be had in what? Reverence of all them that are about him. You and I, you and I need to be reverent to the Lord. Here's 1 Peter 2.24, which I'll elaborate on towards the end. Who in his own self bear our sins in his own body <clears throat> on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness. Get this, here it is. By whose stripes ye, or me, were healed. Amen? What's a stripe here? This is talking about Jesus Christ's crucifixion. It's a bruise. It's a wail. It's a wound that trickles with blood. Here it is. Or the marks left on the body by the stripes of a whip. How many know that our dear Lord took all this for us? meant much more as well. You guys know, but the whip was a big deal. It says, by whose stripes ye were healed. Amen? Now, here's Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stri stripes, excuse me, we are healed. All right, he was wounded. All right, what's that mean? He was wounded fatally, which is true. He bore through. He, it was a pierce of a wound physically unto death. You guys know, before they stabbed him with the spear, he had already given up the ghost. He gave up the ghost. Amen. He laid his life down willingly. For what? Our transgression. For our rebellion. For our transgression against God. Christ was the offering for our transgression. Amen? Yes. He was bruised, he was crushed and broken to be made contrite. And that means feeling like a showing of sorrow, remorse for sin or shortcoming. God was our contrite. To allow oneself to be crushed, which is exactly what Christ had done for our iniquities, for our perversity, our depravity, our evil, our twistings or perverting things deliberately. He did it all for you and I. And then it says the chastisement of our peace, that chastisement, his correction, his dis, our discipline. Here it means the supreme demonstration of God's love came when Jesus Christ bore the chastisement of our peace, used here in Isaiah 53, 5. Amen? Yes. And so our peace, our shalom, our completeness, our soundness, our welfare, our health, prosperity, our peace was upon him, and it was. And you accept him, guess what happens? Amen? you get saved. You pray, you get saved, you pray to him and you get healed. Amen? Listen, folks, it's wise to, to always seek Lord. You know, I would ask you to do this. I believe in doctors. Don't get me wrong. And I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. Yes, go. Take your medication. Absolutely. Here's what I'm saying. Why don't you pray? Pray along with what God wants you to do. And you watch what happens. 
In the church that I pastor, we have seen great miracles. Back healed, legs grown. You know, I know that sounds, it might sound a little foreign to you, but I'm telling you, it's the same God is in this Bible. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, does he heal everybody? I believe he does. Um, I'm not, I don't understand why some people get healed and some don't. But our job is just to believe. Let me give you a simple task. You know, those that die, you pray for them to be rose again. If they don't, you bury them. Okay, I'm not trying to be a smart aleck, but you just, our part is to believe. It's his part to do the movement. When somebody comes and I lay hands on them and they get healed, it's not me at all. It's Jesus Christ working through me. Amen? So, by his stripes we're healed. Now, the word stripe here means bruise, stripe, wound, blow. Here it means the suffering servant of Isaiah, which is talking about this Isaiah, the servant of Isaiah, which is talking about First Peter. Amen? We are healed. You and I are healed. And that means, now get this, I love this. How many think our nation, and if you're in the United States, I know some of your people in other countries, but get this. You and I are healed, make helpful, and to heal. But guess what else it says? Of national defects or hurts. Our nation needs help. Of hurts of nations involving restored favor. You and I in the United States and probably most other countries, we need to be restored back to the favor of God. We have turned our backs on the Lord. We're killing we're shedding innocent blood. Amen. Look at Proverbs. This is another. I taught on this a while back. Look at Proverbs 6, you know, and look at 16, 17, 18, and 19. It'll tell you. All right. So now, let, so here's what happened. Um, this is, um, I didn't read this, but now the last two verses. And he returned to the man of God and all of his company and came and stood before him. Man, can you imagine how he felt at this point? And he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray, take a blessing of thy servant. But he said, As the Lord liveth before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. Now, that's another story in that thing about Gehazi, how he did. He acted like uh, his master wanted it. You know what ended up happening? He went and caught up with this. A uh, famous man, a man of valor. And he said, you know, hey, you know, we will take this and that. So he did. And when he came back, Elisha said, where did you go, Gehazi? So I didn't go nowhere. He went to go grab a little of the goods. And he said, because you did this, the leprosy is on you. See about that? Look, I'm not, the Bible does say a workman's worthy of his wages. But listen, why do we want to get paid for everything? You know, if you just pray, you know, if I pray and somebody gets healed, should they give me an offering? Of course not. I'm nobody. I'm just a conduit like yourself. Amen. So I hope this thing stood out. But I want you to think about, think about the simplest things. This man thought that this oh, man and God would do something grander. And it was just simply go do this. A lot of times, folks, the most simplest thing. Remember what I said? Sometimes we have to do the ridiculous or the miraculous. Now, I'm going to give you a, a little testimony here, and then we'll close. There was a man, as I understand it, this story I got several years ago. He was contemplating suicide. And he went to one of the major chains. It was like Walmart or Myers. I believe it was Myers. It's irrelevant where it was at. And this guy said, Lord, if I see a man standing on his head in this particular store, I will not commit suicide. I'm murdering the story a little bit, but you're going to get the gist of it. Amen? So sure enough, I think it had to be doing with some, maybe it was at the meat counter or something. I don't know. That's irrelevant. So sure enough, this guy goes and here's this guy standing on his head. And the one, can you imagine the guy thinking, what do I got to stand on my head for? But a lot of times we have to do the ridiculous for the miraculous. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to have to stand on your head, you know, but if God tells you to do something, like it might be, it must be, might be the most absurd thing in the world. But you do it and you think, wow, you know. And I've got a lot of other testimonies like that and how God moves, but you guys get the gist of it. So Lord bless you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these people. Father, I prayed a lot of things. You choose the foolish things of the, of the wise, or excuse me, the foolish things of the world that confound the wise. So I ask a blessing on these folks that they you know, Lord, we don't have to do anything grander. We just have to be faithful and submit to your will. God bless them, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, folks. I'll see you next week. Take care.